You're listening to the Booze and Bloodshed Podcast. <laughs> Another episode of Booze and Bloodshed Podcast. I'm Leah. And I'm Brandon. We are so happy that you've chosen to join us this morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you may be listening from. As always, we're here to dish and discuss all things boozy and bloody. True crime and horror movies will be our focus every week, along with an alcoholic beverage that we think will pair well with the subject of each episode. Today, we are going to be talking about... 47 Meters Down Uncaged, the 2019 sequel to the original 47 Meters Down. And we are going to be pairing that with a ranch water cocktail. Ranch water cocktail that we are pairing with the Fortaleza Tequila. So, oh, what did I just do? <laughs> Fortaleza Tequila. And so. it is different than the ranch water in a can. That is not what we are drinking. Yeah, we, are we are drinking an actual cocktail. The actual cocktail. So, um, so this, I have to say, when Leah and I went to stay at a hotel, a staycation, I guess, and we stayed at this place. It was kind of a Western Texas theme, which was awesome. I guess we can say where it was. I don't know. Yeah, in uh, Las Colinas, yeah, Texas. Texican Court. It's yes. a really cool um, hotel. But they had this little place called Salt, which is there, and it's like a tequila bar. It's almost what I imagine. Okay, so the theme of the hotel is almost what I imagine everybody's BFD about like Palm Springs would be, kind of. Yeah, like a mixture between Palm Springs and, and West Texas desert. Yes. Like, I, I haven't been to Palm Springs, so I really can't speak on that, there. but kind of. We drove through it. It's close enough. Oh, we did? Yeah, I was we probably asleep. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, or having some kind of like anxiety attack about not. <laughs> Wanting to be in the car anymore. <laughs> so, yeah. So we were, um, we we kind of went in there. We stopped to get a, you know, a, a beverage because we just ate like something really light. Went to the restaurant and you had your taquitos and I had like some shrimp cocktail thing, which was good. It was really good. Yes. But, and then we ceviche. had a ceviche. Ceviche. <laughs> and then we had, um, I had a mixed, I don't even know what I had. What did I have? I had a glass of wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying not to drink beer. Yeah. I'm trying to watch my carbs right now. And I was trying to, I, and she had like this really awesome margarita thing. I'm like, man, it looks good. So we're like, let's go let's explore this place a little bit. And then we went to Salt. And they had all these tequilas. Now, granted, before we went there, I haven't been a typical tequila fan at all. No, and I, I really haven't either because the only time I ever consume tequila is in a margarita. Yeah, and I used to, so. even, we used to get shitty on it, right? I mean, but we drank tequila to get drunk. We didn't drink it because yeah. we enjoyed it. And yeah. as a matter of fact, a few years ago, uh, Paul brought that yes. Don Julio, yeah, 16, yeah, yeah. 16, was it 1642 or something? Well, uh, 1942. Is it 1942? I'm pretty sure it's 1942. Anyway, it was Don Julio and it's a really tall bottle. And he's like, this is a sipping tequila. And I'm thinking, A, I don't like tequila to begin with. B, I don't like a sipping tequila, much less. And now I'm wondering if we would like it. So that's what, that's my point. That's like, okay, so we went to Salt. And the first thing that popped in my mind was everybody keeps talking about these damn ranch waters. Mm -hmm. And so he pours it for us and it is strong as shit. And, and first of all, the, the recipe that we use for the ranch water is just a, a typical glass. I put two shots of tequila, about a tablespoon of lime juice, mm -hmm. and fill the rest of it up with Topo Chico. That's and a, a tablespoon, I feel like, is kind of heavy. But because we... I mean, I, I don't know. I feel like... It's heavy for most people, but that's how I like it. Yeah. So it's kind of to taste. But yeah. That, so okay, here's the thing, though. When this guy poured it, he gave it to us in a cocktail glass. Two shots, a splash of lime, and yes. a splash of Topo Chico. Oh, and that was tough. And we drank it, and it was like, holy <laughs> shit, that's a strong, like, it seriously took me two, well, almost two and a half hours yeah, to drink. a long time. But the whole time. And I was, had two drinks while you were doing that, after my, <laughs> <laughs> after my ranch water. <laughs> And the whole time we were doing that, it was like, the more the ice melted, the more it was like, okay, hold on a second. This yeah. Is, yeah. This is starting to make a little sense. 
we we sat there at the hotel they do these little bonfire things too and it's really cool and it actually like the the drink and and the margarita went along you had like a jalapeno margarita oh yeah that was good but like it started making sense and the Mm -hmm. more the ice melted it was like okay hold on a second this is kind of tasting kind of good like Mm -hmm. and so since then i've been on this tequila spree like i'm buying all these expensive ass tequilas because i want to try them and now i'm starting to develop appreciation for it yeah and if you're trying to kind of watch your weight like brandon is doing which i am i've lost 30 it's have you really? Yeah, I've lost 30 pounds so far. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't know why I'm acting surprised by that. I've known that. <laughs> but hey, <okay. laughs> it's it's probably the least bad for you thing to drink. And Supposed especially a ranch water because all you're putting in it is water, yeah, there's some no lime su- juice, and then tequila. There's no sugar. It. There's no sugar, but it's just like um, it, it. So drinking the ranch water almost gives me a more appreciation of the tequila. Yes. Now that I know. Yes. And now that I know, now I'm experimenting with all these different tequilas. And we found, I think, probably one of the best tequilas, authentic Mexican 100% blue agave tequilas that are out there. And it's called Fortaleza. And it's in uh, it's in Tequila, Mexico. Um, or Tequila Valley in Jalisco. And it has a cute little agave plant as the topper. It is. But this bottle is about 60 <laughs> bucks. So this is a yeah. 750 milliliter bottle of Blanco, and that's what I'm, I'm going to make sure I clarify. The Blanco tequila is what we're using in these drinks, but we, now we've got Blanco, Reposado, we've got Añejo, all this in mm-hmm. this brand, and it it's so good. And so um, it is. These are cooked in stone brick ovens, and then I don't know what Tahona extraction is, but the deep the, the water sources deep well water, and it's fermented in wood tanks, wood wooden tanks. And then open air fermentation, uh, so without the fermentation, without the fibers and stuff. Not that anybody cares about that, but it's distilled, distilled two times. So it's forty proof, which is eighty percent, eighty proof, which is forty percent alcohol. And it's saying natural oak, charcoal filtration, blended batches, distilled at or near proof, no additives. The no additives thing is a very big thing for tequila because a lot of these big tequila manufacturers. We'll put, I'm talking so much, aren't no, I? No, 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 no. I, I was just waiting for you to finish talking because I was going to say something about that. Yeah, most of these tequila manufacturers will add flavors, color, to make it match, to make it consistent. When you find a tequila that's no additive, that's an authentic tequila, and, and Fortaleza is authentic. And you do not have to be any kind of expert to realize that after you try that. Because I am no, by any sense of the word, an expert at tequila at all. In between a really popular brand that most bars have, and then this one that I have I'll never even it. heard of before. Well, well, we did a side by side comparison of yes, several. It was huge. It was the a sc- difference. screamingly obvious which one was the craft. Yes. And so I, I, I would originally, I think when we were at the can, the, the Texican court, mm-hmm. ours was made with Herradura. Her, Her, Herradura, yeah. It was okay. I've had it with Don Julio Blanco, mm-hmm. which is good. But when you do a shot, a taste, a yes. taster of Don Julio Blanco and Fortaleza Blanco, huge difference. Don Julio is like sweet. It tastes, and it's almost like syrupy consistency. It's yeah, it's weird, and you can tell a huge difference. So if you're trying to get into the tequila thing, first of all, I would recommend starting with ranch waters. Yes, and and give it some time. Try three, four different ranch waters. Kind of find what. Like the dilution. Yes. Find the dilution that you like. Find the kind of to taste that you like with the lime and everything. Because I was not a fan the first maybe two I had. By the third one I had, I really liked it a lot. And now I would probably order this instead of a margarita at a restaurant. I'm almost exclusively drinking these things now. And I I love my craft beer. Yeah. But this thing has kind of changed my (laughs) drinking world a little bit. I was like, I really appreciate a good tequila. Yeah. And me too. And before... I, I didn't like the way it tasted, but the ranch water might give you appreciation. So if you haven't done one, do it. Again, my my mixture is two shots of Blanco tequila with one tablespoon of lime juice and top it off with, with um, Topo Chico. And I take a little bit more lime in mine because it kind of levels out the... I can't even say the burn of the alcohol. This This alcohol, like this tequila, to me, does not really have a burn. 
It's, it's it's very smooth, but it's not because some tequilas you taste it and you're like, holy shit! Like that was really hard to drink. That yeah, you do a shot, you're like, oh yeah. I mean, this I, one is not like that to me. I mean, you still get a little bit of the, but it's just not bad. So smooth. Mm-hmm. It's really good. So um, yeah, I would I would recommend doing the, what we're doing the ranch water thing, and then try to splurge on a nicer bottle of tequila. There's a there's an app out there that you can get it's called Tequila Matchmaker, which shockingly I have it on my phone too. And Fortaleza, That's kind of a cute name. Fortaleza is one of the highest rated tequilas that are out there. It gets a 90 from the panel, the panel, the people that made the app, mm-hmm. and the community gives it an 89, which is really high for tequilas. It's, let's go to like a, an 1800 margarita. I mean, eight margarita, 1800 gold oh. or silver. They get like a 70 something. Really? So, and those are great in, in margaritas. We, we've had their margaritas. 1800 is great. But when you really pay attention to it, mm-hmm. it's a huge difference. I would, my, this is me personally, I wouldn't recommend putting Fortaleza and Yeho or, or Reposado in a margarita. No. I would definitely make yeah. sure that it's sipping or like ranch water where it's just diluted, but it's still accented. What's the word I'm thinking of? still highlights the flavors of the tequila but i also feel like about that it's again it's kind of a to taste thing because the reason we don't like it is because we've been having that um 1800 gold in the margarita and it kind kind of cuts the sweetness in it yeah, if you want a little bit of a sweeter margarita these aren't bad like it's still True. good in it it's just a little bit sweeter and we're not into like the super sweet margarita True. so it's that kind of true. dependent on the person yeah yeah Maybe, I, I mean, I think we all know that 1800 gold has got a shit ton of additives in it yeah. in, in color. But maybe that's why it it's so good in a margarita because it probably cuts some of that sweetness and yeah. balanced. Fortaleza doesn't do that. It just keeps the, it, the, it keeps the sweetness sweet. It, yeah. But it's just, and it's very subtle in a margarita. So if you're going to drink a higher end tequila, make it in something that's sweetened or that will accent. That's not the word I'm thinking of. I want to think of something I that just, will pop out the flavor emphasize that's it <laughs> and the way i kind of feel about it is 1800 i feel like is so strong and such a burning alcohol thing that i'm not really a fan of it in anything besides a margarita yeah but this one i feel like if you put it in the margarita and the reason i don't really like it is because i've had it in ranch water so many times now that i feel like if i put it in a margarita all the flavors of the tequila by itself are gone mm-hmm See, then I feel like we're starting to turn into like snobs on this stuff now. No, no. Not by, I'm not a snob by any means, but that's just kind of how I feel about it because I actually like tasting the tequila flavor in the ranch water, and then when you put it in the margarita, all I taste is the mix. Yeah, and uh, let me make sure we repeat ourselves. Before this, we were not fans of tequila. No. I would drink it in a margarita because it was a margarita, but I didn't like a sipping tequila, like you said. If we yeah. could go back to Paul... We might appreciate it now. Probably. Back then, we were just like... Ah, oh, my God. Yeah, I, choke I it remember. <laughs> so... Um, it was hard. Yeah, that's my recommendation. And then when you make your ranch water, start off with Blanco. They say that if you like Reposado or Añejo, that you'll like it in ranch water. I don't know about that, because I had one last night at Christina's. Well, no, not Christina's, but... Glorious. Glorious, and it fucking sucked. It was <laughs> terrible. They, they salt they salt rim the glass. Don't rim your glass with salt. Let it be straight. And I've never seen somebody do that with a ranch Dude, water. It was I thought that was weird. I don't even know what tequila they I don't even know if they used a tequila. It was terrible. Anyway, <laughs> going back to the point. So just make sure you start off with Blanco. You know the difference between the Blanco and the Añejo is? What? Nothing. Blanco is not <laughs> barrel aged. Reposado is barrel aged up to or, or I think one year. And I think Añejo is aged for one to three years. Oh, so Blanco is just, just distilled and then bottled. That's exactly right. Yes. It's oh. the same thing. It's just not aged in barrels. Okay. Reposado's aged, I think it's one to three, zero to one year. Mm-hmm. And Yeho is one to three years in the barrel. And now they have extra in Yeho, yeah, which I is saw three that. years and beyond. Oh, so that's why it gets darker and darker. It's darker. It gets more okay. complex and it gets okay. more expensive too. So and now that we've talked a lot, we got, I got excited about this because it's not my new thing now. Let's just take a thipper. Now we're going to take a little thip. <laughs> A little thip. Now, obviously, this is going to smell like tequila and Topo Chico and lime. The profile on Tequila Matchmaker says you get a lot of ag- a cooked agave on the aroma, black pepper, uh, earthiness, citrus, olives, vegetal, minerals, 
And then the flavors is kind of the same thing. With the Blanco, I don't smell the butter thing. I do with like the Reposado and the Añejo. I, took a I, sip, do, I, cheated. I do smell the vanilla. The vanilla and like the salty smell. Now that you say it, I can taste it before. Mm-hmm. If you wouldn't have said that, I wouldn't have tasted it. What? Vanilla. Oh, Are you talking about yeah. the aroma or the flavor? I'm talking about the aroma. Oh. But yeah, I taste. to me, I taste the, the black pepper thing and the vanilla now look when at that. I drink it. See this right there? Mm-hmm. The salt brine. Take a sip of it now. And see, I can taste the salt, the, like a salinity in it. That's weird how that stuff can influence your flavor, your taste. So it's like an aftertaste of saltiness. Yeah, I think I've noticed that before, but I really I didn't pinpoint what it was. <laughs> That's so fun. The earthy thing, I kind of get the earthy thing. So we just took a drink. This is just fantastic. It's really good. Tequila. It really is. Fortaleza, 60, about 60 bucks a bottle. Splurge if you can find it. It's made in Mexico. They do small batches. So you're, I would go to your upper end tequila store or tequila store. Spirit store? If you are in the Allen area. <laughs> yeah, what is that beverage? <laughs> the Allen, Texas area. It was called King Liquor. Beverage King. Beverage beverage king i think it was called king liquor or What's something it? i don't know it's where, real, where is it by it's off of uh 121 and waters waters uh, waters drive it's next to a boba place <laughs> somewhere over there so if, if you know where if you know where um uh wow, what's the restaurant that we go get beer at all that you used to go get beer oh at. brass tap yeah it's right across the road from brass tap in Allen. In Allen. And we are I was able to score this at um Specs too. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Specs yeah. doesn't have as much of an inventory as Allen does. That but, was a that was a pretty cool store. I was very surprised and impressed by how many liquors they had. It was of small, each kind of liquor. And they had everything. Yeah, that place was stuffed to the brim yeah. of liquor. So if you're in Allen beverage and they didn't have a gigantic selection of beer but they had a pretty impressive selection like there were some beers in there that i hadn't seen in quite a while yeah well, i'm gonna go i don't have to see where it's it's at now because if you're in the dallas area it, it's definitely a go-to you have to go it is called uh <laughs> now i can't find it it's on my facebook somewhere i think it might be that though I think it was Liquor King or King Liquor or something like that. Something like that. So, splurge and get yourself a bottle of Fortaleza, Blanco. I would suggest starting for Ranch Water. Yes. Um, and so, which takes us to... Oh, we already took a sip. Did we take a sip and talk about what it tastes like already? We did this. Kind of. We did this, the sniff. Let's go ahead and... It's really fucking good. <laughs> and I, I never thought, because you know what's funny is my mom's been drinking these for kind of a long time now. Like I would say like, I say a long time, like did maybe a couple, him, maybe a couple of years. Did she call him ranch water back then too? Uh, no, yeah. she was, I mean, I think she did after my sister told her like, that's what it was, but she was drinking, um, I don't know what kind of tequila, but she's always mixed these in just like a little cocktail glass kind of thing and drank them because my mom's really big on you know being fit and stuff so if she drinks she doesn't drink anything that's going to be like high carbs like beer or anything like that um but I always thought I could never and I told her this a lot I could never drink something that didn't have like a cocktail that didn't have like some kind of mixer in it like a margarita Mm -hmm. and she was like it's really good and I was like like I don't think so and I would even taste it and I'd be like I could I could not drink that I don't know how you're drinking it now I get it which do you know what you said you don't know what tequila she uses no I have to see my mom thinks this is nasty <laughs> and she's a tequila person she's a tequila person she it's not for her she she gotta have her sweet so she likes the sweet stuff and she also likes but she also a more of a what she would call quote unquote woodsy yeah taste. woodsy. that's the reposado in yeho yes so it's weird she hates ipas we love ipas mm-hmm. um she likes the sweeter stuff she likes her wine sweet we yeah. like the drier stuff, the more bitterness, yeah. too. So maybe there's a transition there. Did I not turn this monitor off? There could be. I mean, I, I think if you like a higher alcohol beer, like maybe like a really high alcohol stout, like a drier one, I think you could probably get into this. Yeah. Because that's really... that's what I like, and that's kind of what you like. You don't like really sweet stouts. Mm-mm. I used to, but not anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah we're 
palettes are developed. They're they're developing. <laughs> I mean, there could be you know some kind of connection there. There also it could just be a personal preference. Thing. Yeah. But this is this is like. But I think it's something that everybody should definitely try. And it's not because it's called ranch water that I'm saying this, but if like if you're, it's kind of a nice night and it's a, a fire or something. It goes mm-hmm. so good with just sitting there and just it hanging does. out with the fire. It like, does. It's so good. So I also never thought that I would think that I'd be a tequila liker. Never thought I would. But I'm like, yeah. Shit, now it's so good. You know what's so funny is when I was a kid, my da- my dad's always been into scotch and like the very high alcohol drinks mm-hmm. um where he'll just drink things like straight yeah, or or mix or yet. mix with a little bit of water like maybe that much water or some ice and that's it he does not drink cocktails ever yeah, but i and, could i could probably do this with this and i ice. always i always yeah maybe i always thought like <laughs> this sounds crazy but he would drink those and i would always smell like if he was talking to me or something and i'm I, it sounds crazy and it sounds, it sounds smells bad. good but i would always think oh my god like that sound that smells like such an adult alcohol you know what i mean it is and then i would always think there's no way i could drink something like that and now when i drink this i it's like a i don't know yeah, it's like the other night you're like can you impress me like alcohol I was like, <laughs> we both just drank one of these <laughs> But when I drank this, it kind of reminds me of what I used to think about the stuff he would drink. And (laughs) that's so disgusting. And now I'm like, I kind of get it now. Like, I feel like such an adult now. (laughs) I've graduated. I I never thought I'd I'd like tequila. And now I'm sitting here and it's it's all I'm drinking now. I really had, I've had one beer in what, three weeks, two, three weeks. Yeah. And usually it's the other way around. I love, love beer. And like, still, and you even said the other day, you were like, oh my God, I miss drinking I'm, beer. I miss, a, <laughs> I miss a good IPA, good chewy beer. But like, this is a good substitute. It's good. Less carbs. Yes. Uh, healthier for you. And you don't have to drink nearly as much of it. So. You know, it's funny. Suzanne Summers, <laughs> in her little book, she writes about being fit. She said, the only thing you should ever drink is tequila. Listen to her. She's so smart. <laughs> You why know, did I? Why did I discover that's why she this? Got, that's why she got that bod. She got that bod, that mom bod. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, enough about that. But yeah, if you're gonna do this, like get get a good Fortaleza tequila, um, additive free, and it's 100 percent blue agave from Mexico. Man, it's it's good. Like, it's good. That's all I can say. <laughs> it's good. It's it's so good. We seriously been good. talking about this damn tequila for 20 <laughs> minutes. Well, shit, it really is that it's good. That and, good. And him and I, Brandon and I, are not going to ever promote something if we really don't think it's good. Like, I, I just, I will never be able to mask something I don't think is good. Yeah, like the last beer we read, we did. No, not, it was, it was terrible. That oh, was, was it, it steel, was bad. Something steel? Steel Reserve malt steel liquor. Reserve. It was terrible. <laughs> it was horrible. This, I think it would be quite, I think people should stop listening to this if we gave a good review on malt liquor of any kind. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. There's probably a good one out there. Is there? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> but, but I'm going to say this is probably the longest segment we've had where we've discussed alcohol this long because it is that good. Next week, I think we should do Boone's Farm or Why? Arbor Mist. Dude, that is sweet. I'm just I was, I was about to say, we're going to have a headache <laughs> after we have that. No, I was joking. Maybe we should do one of the, the uh, a beer, a drink like your dad drinks and let's see. Oh, I can't, dude. No. Is it scotch? Not that- scotch doers doer scotch and he'll put a little bit of luke i say lukewarm like room temperature water in it and maybe that much what and if, then the rest is scotch i cannot believe that that's what good. if what if it's we not just tried it and we're like holy shit we get it dude maybe like a year ago he had me pour him one you of said those that about this dude a year ago though true but about a year ago he had me pour him a little bit of scotch with a little bit of water just out of tap water and <sighs> i oh yeah, not even filtered water. <laughs> it's tap like water. The chlorine stuff. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I said, I'm going to take a sip of this. And he goes, okay, go ahead. So I took a sip of it. And my lips were burning. <laughs> I was like, how do you sit here and drink that? Like, oh. But I'm pretty sure he only has one or two and he's good. <laughs> Probably. But, and he's also been drinking it like my entire life. And I'm 26. <laughs> So he's had a long time to adapt. I'm pretty sure he <laughs> he's probably getting the taste the taste that you smell, and it probably tastes very good to him. I it's, never would have thought. I said this too many times already. Never would have thought that I really would enjoy tequila, and here we are, yeah, drinking it with 
with Topo Chico only. There's not like yeah. additives or I mean, additives. I keep saying that. It's not like there's a um, sweet and sour mixed with it or no. Grand yeah, there's nothing to mask it except the lime to taste. And I mean, you can put as little or as much lime as you want in that because the Topo Chico. I mean, it dilutes it a little bit, but you still taste it you really still strong. Taste really strong. And that's what we I said before we came up here. My drink is strong, but it's not strong. It's not like overpowering yeah. i can't drink this it's like yes. you can taste the tequila yeah you know what's i'm sorry i'm not an adult you know it's <laughs> stop you know what's i'm being serious like i feel making fun of me for saying that no but you know what's really funny is like the more the more often that i drink this which now is the stronger like, you like it now it's like I feel like we drink this all the time now i know but the more often we drink this the more it's gonna sound nuts but the more I feel like it tastes like a margarita to me. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Like a low cal margarita. Yeah, like it almost because you adopts can taste this, it. it almost adopts this sweetness in mm-hmm. a way. And I don't understand how that's happening because there's nothing in it except lime and topo chico. And so the other day you had oh when you fell and hurt your leg. Yeah. Um it was like you were trying to figure out something to help with it and you said just I said, You want a shot of tequila? And you're like, yes. Yeah. And you took two shots of this and you weren't like, oh, <laughs> No, You're no, like, no, no. It was good. Yeah, it was good. And I'm I'm very bad about doing the whole like blowing out of my mouth and not breathing through my nose thing. So I don't taste it. Yeah, and she goes. <laughs> yeah. And didn't do it. I didn't do that with this. This is like. You're also in a lot good. of pain. So you probably didn't care. Well, no. I mean, I, I could do it today and it would be okay. It's good stuff. It was, it was good. And we need to go back to a Texan court, to Texican court. Texican too. court. Yeah. And that's another thing. We need to really push that place because that place is so it's nice. It's, it's a, very. It's a nice little staycation getaway. It's not like a high end hotel, like you know the Jewel or the Adolphus or something. It's a totally different nice. It's like it is, and it's not. It's it's very themed. Yes, but not because, in a cheesy, trashy way. Yeah, this they they did, they did it right, man. It really felt like so they have it. It's surrounded by this wall, mm-hmm. right? And you don't have to leave that place unless you just absolutely want to. You don't feel like you're in Dallas. No, like, you really feel you like don't. you're in, in West Texas somewhere. Like, I yeah. feel like we drove somewhere and we're staying at this hotel in the middle of nowhere and the, in a cool way. The food, my food, I don't know how you felt about yours. My food was phenomenal. It was great. And that's all I ate. I ate the ceviche. I didn't have anything else to eat. Yeah. And typically, if I didn't eat that little, I'm like effing starving. Yeah. It was fine. It was yeah. good. And we really enjoyed the, they had live music. It was uh, some old guys playing country, mm-hmm. which sounds cheesy, but it was really cool. Yeah. And so uh, the yeah. drink, the margaritas for me were a little bit tart, but they were still pretty good, you know, for a hotel margarita. And, and it, it was just such drinks. a nice vibe. It was to- the, the whole theme worked with what the drinks they were making mm-hmm. work. The food that they did worked. It was good, man. It's like it really didn't feel like you were stuck in the hustle and bustle of Dallas. And then when you get outside the hotel grounds, it's like, shit, you're in Las Plainas. There's all these hotels and stuff around. But you yeah. don't feel that way when you're there. And across the and street. And bed is effing comfortable. <laughs> it really is. I don't sleep good, period. That no. was a comfortable bed. It really was. That, um, across the street, what was that? The convention Oh, the center? Urban Convention Center? Yeah. There's Urban literally, Convention Center and then the Toyota Music Factories down the street. Literally, you walk across like a crosswalk and you're at the convention center. But when you're in those walls, like you have no idea. No, you, you could, we could see it from our room, but it still didn't feel that way. Like, But we were, yeah, on the other side of the hotel. But when you're in like the interior, like in the courtyard area, and there's several places to sit. And, it's just a really nice and when getaway. You, when you first drive up, you open the door and the first thing you smell is like wood being burned. Like it smells yes. like smoke. And it was like... Oh my God! It smelled so right. Yes, and when you check in, you can they offer you beer, a Lone Star. Yeah, well, anything, anything uh, you want. So whatever they have, they'll give it to you. And I think you can get they wine give or you tequila, though, huh? wine or whatever you want. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you could have got it any kind of drink you wanted. We didn't know. Now we do. Well, I knew. I just didn't want one. Next time you know, <laughs> say yeah, give me a ranch water. Yes. All right, now that's a that's thing. our plug for for me <laughs> for me Fortaleza is a ten out of ten. It's probably okay. the best tequila I've ever had. It is for me too. Uh, get it if you can get it. Get it. And so, so today's mo- oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh no 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 you're good. I'm wearing these reading glasses that are so thick now. I have to read it close. <laughs> I'm sorry. So today we're going to be talking about the sequel to Forty Seven Meters Down that which starred- I didn't know there was a se- I didn't know this was a sequel. Yeah. So the first one. Um, 
oh my god the first one like gives me panic the whole thing gives me a panic attack like it's terrible the first one they go cage diving and it's um god what is her name she's in this is us and she's in princess diaries um mandy moore how long ago was the first one not that long ago like maybe 2017 maybe was it kind of the same theme as this so in the first one it's her and her sister and they go cage diving in mexico and god is so good they go on a really shady looking boat that's almost like the boat in jaws (laughs) but worse (laughs) and um what is this? It sounds they, familiar, but I, I, I don't think, think I've I seen think it. I think we've watched it maybe once together. I haven't seen it in a long time because it really, it really it makes me claustrophobic. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they go down in the cage, and the the chain from the boat to the cage snaps, and it falls. Oh and they're yeah. locked in the cage. Okay, I didn't know this Fuck was a sequel that. to that. Now yes, I get it. Yes. Yeah. So it's a sequel, but it's completely unrelated to the first one. Okay, I get it now. I, I didn't know that was the uh, the same thing. Yes. Now so, that makes sense. <clears throat> okay, so the summary now, of this. Now, I will say, for me, the first one, it was okay. I actually kind of enjoyed this second I kind one. of like this one, too. I, I don't think from, it's amazing. Aside from some really bad effects. I think the acting in this is actually pretty good. Yeah, they did really. They did some pretty bad animation in here. <laughs> animation? <laughs> is that CGI. what it is? <laughs> well, kind of. It's like computer animation. Yeah, some of it's kind of bad, but overall, the movie's kind of good. I mean, I think I think the cinematography in this movie is pretty good. I think the acting is really good. It's I mean, for, for a scary movie, I think it's good. At first, it was bordering cheesy. It, I, and it is it is kind yeah. of cheesy, but, but it's, it's not like horrible. I, I I actually did not hate this movie. Surprisingly, I, I cannot know. believe that. I always I thought that you didn't like this movie. Uh, and we first, watched, this is like the third time we watched the, the it. The first time we watched it, I got claustrophobic as shit. There was a few times I was like, Ooh, "Oh, no. I know, I know." <coughs> but then it was like. Second time we watched it, it was okay. This time we watched it, it was like, not as bad. Yeah. It, I, I really like it a lot. Um, okay, so the summary of this is that it's a diving adventure of four teenage girls exploring a submerged Mayan city. Once inside, their rush of excitement turns into a jolt of terror as they discover the sunken ruins are a hunting ground for deadly great white sharks. With their air supply steadily dwindling, the friends must navigate the underwater labyrinth of a claustrophobic cave in eerie tunnels in search of a way out of their watery hell. Am I, are you reading something different than I am? Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to follow along. I oh, can't. I'm so sorry. Well, what are you reading? I'm so sorry. That's okay. That's um. okay. <laughs> How does this get a 5 out of 10? Yeah, so on IMDb, it got a 5 out of a 10. I disagree uh, with that. Rotten, Dis- disagree. Rotten Tomatoes, the audience score was 3.8 out of 5, which is fairly high. But the critic score on Rotten Tomatoes was 4.7 out of 10. Man, I don't give it. And it's certified rotten. I don't give it a 10, but at the least, it's a good 6.5 or 7. I would say 6.5 or 7. I think that's fair. Um, Because there was some stuff in it that, and there's a certain character in it that I think she was not an amazing actress. But I thought she, for her first movie, I thought she was pretty good. Is it the Stallone one? Yes. So, okay. yeah, so one of the characters in this is Sylvester Stallone's daughter. Her name is, I think, Sistine Stallone. They have the same mouth. Oh, my God. They look so much alike. It's crazy. Yeah, when she like talks and moves her mouth, it's like, oh, that's his daughter. <laughs> and she has she has a deep, deeper voice. And it's, <laughs> it's kind of funny to watch it once you realize. Well, I, I've known the whole time I've ever watched it that that's who she was. But um, when you really think about that that's who her dad is, you're like, oh, my God. Y'all are yeah. so much alike. It's weird. Um, but you, I, if you know who it is, it's like, ooh. But I very much disagree with all of the scores, except maybe the audience score um, on Rotten Tomatoes. Because, I, I mean, I think it's a fairly good movie. I mean, yeah. I don't think it's terrible. I mean, you can't rate this up there with, like, the scary movies of Friday the 13th or Check no. the Chainsaw Master. It's, no. not the, it's not the same. For it's, a... To me, it's it's like, um, who's the same the dude that wrote The Notebook? Go with Nicholas me. Sparks. It's like a Nicholas Sparks scary movie. Uh, it's like a... There's a certain cheese factor to it. Exactly. Yeah. But... And the cinematography a little bit reminds me of one of his movies, too. Like... Oh, I thought the cinematography was so pretty. It, that's why... It kind of reminds me of, of his... Because in the notebook, he... They went in that pond with all the swans and stuff. Mm-hmm. Right? Kind of reminded me of that kind of a feel. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you can't rate this up there with the rest of the other movies like that, but... Twelve million dollars was their budget, and they made forty-seven point six million. Wow. I mean, they made a pretty freaking penny off of a twelve million dollar budget. They made four times what their budget was. Yeah, it's just good. 
th- this is for me. This is one of those movies that I could I can watch it a few more times and it'd still be okay. Yeah, like, I, I think so too. I mean, I'll, obviously, I wouldn't watch it because we watched this last night. It would it would probably be another six months or so before I'd watch it again, just because I've seen it so many times already. Yeah. But it's, it's, I would definitely watch it again. And it's been about that long since we watched it last time anyway. Yeah, probably. So yeah, that's not a bad, re- it's not a, it's not a bad repeater. And another thing that I have re-peter. to say about the, the critic score on Rotten Tomatoes that I just almost can't, I not even almost, I can't take it seriously. Do you remember that alligator movie that, or that crocodile or whatever the hell it was movie that I made you watch? <clears throat> Which one? We've only ever seen one. Besides like Placid. Damn, you okay? <laughs> That's screaming at me. But you know what I'm talking about where that girl, um, there's like a hurricane happening in Florida and she goes to her dad's house and she gets trapped in the house. There's like alligators oh, in the Oh, that was so shit. stupid. They were saying that that movie was better than this. No way. The Critic. You thought that movie was good too though. At the time. I remember thinking, this is so st- unreal. I didn't. Th- I didn't say. Oh See, my God, that was amazing. This has a realistic factor to it that I like. I th- I think there is a realism to it. Yes. But crocodile in your fucking basement. Come on. In Florida. I mean, during maybe. a hurricane and a flood. Uh, I think that's realistic. <laughs> I mean, ma- maybe. <laughs> um, I don't think. I, I definitely don't think that that movie is better than this one. No. Not at all. No, not even close. Um, I think I wouldn't. Think, thinking about that movie in comparison to this one, out of 10, I would probably give that alligator movie like a three or a four. I mean, now that I understand it, I can see the, the correlation between 47 meters down and uncaged. I can see the likeness of between the two. Which is what? Like the original one. The way, it's just the, everything, the feel of the movie, the scary, the way the scariness is. And they really love sharks and whoever made these things loves sharks. I love sharks no shit <laughs> so i'm always looking for a really good you're shark a megalodon movie. fan like <laughs> i'm not a megalodon fan oh my god you're, think- if you said you did actually did say if i ever saw one of those i'd be so excited <laughs> not if i was in the water i'd probably now, shit my pants here's the thing here's a funny thing you love sharks you're like a huge megalodon fan but if you get in the water in the ocean you're gonna you're freaking out because I don't want to get eaten by a shark. God. Especially after that horrible thing. I think you're thing. really going to get eaten by Megalodon in the middle of the Hawaii you, waters. You don't know. Well, apparently you do. It could happen. You get freaked out. It could happen. I love um, this stuff. Oh, my God. I'm going to the bar. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. When I was on that boat. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Makes me. I'm seriously sweating thinking about that. That was horrible. It is kind of warm in here, though. So, we went. <laughs> my family and I went to Hawaii. What was that? Like. Long time ago now, like when we, you and I first started dating. Uh, it's, Probably it's been like been five, dating for like almost five and a half years. Probably like five years ago. Um, we haven't quite been dating five years yet. <laughs> So no, pretty close though. <laughs> but um, probably about five years ago, we went to Hawaii, and my dad did one of those catamaran like dinner at sunset things off of the coast of Kauai, which the, um, the sounds, Nepali coast. It sounds amazing. Oh my god, it was beautiful. But terrifying Leah, but Leah here terrifying it was so scary so like if anybody if you know what the Nepali coast is it is like the furthest uh, I think it's the furthest point in Kauai and there is like nothing over there on that side of the island because there's which, like the mountains are just crazy huge which only elevated your anxiety and um <laughs> and so we went along on this catamaran and like it was just like oh my god talking about this is making me sweat but like the waves out there are so big because the ocean is so deep around there that like the catamaran was going up and it would like crash down and i was sitting toward the front of the boat like outside i can see you jumping outside and i was like oh my god (laughs) (laughs) and i was i ended up getting splashed really bad so i went inside um like the interior of the boat because they had a bar in the interior a bar if it's bouncing like that i don't fucking know but somehow they did. And um I, don't know. So I think I think they were trying to get out and that's why it was bouncing and then like they turned the engine off or something and then they just you, like you and Sven need to have like a conversation sometime about Hawaii. Oh my god, I love Hawaii. Gosh, he got um, y'all both have gone several many times. <laughs> but so I went to the interior of the boat. This is totally off topic. I went to the interior of the boat and 
because it was it was giving me anxiety thinking about like what if something were to happen to this boat right now and we sunk and there's like nothing because it was like it's like deep deep water it's not like you're close to a beach like you're out there are you sweating and, right now oh my god terrible and i went into the interior of the boat and sat at the bar and drank a bunch of mai tais <laughs> and my dad my dad came out there and he was like why are, why don't you, why don't you come out here it's so pretty out here and, and then Brayden came in there and he sat with me and my dad was like you're missing this like this is so pretty out here and i was like dude i can't like it's my oh my god it was horrible it was horrible so when you're inside were you beautiful bouncing around? do what when you were inside were you bouncing around too i don't remember doing that but um oh my god it's it's beautiful i think it's something that everybody needs to see at least once in their life but maybe not on a catamaran <laughs> <laughs> because those things the in the front of the boat all they have is like a net and then like some seats like around I didn't know the they side. had catamarans that big they had a bar inside it, it was a pretty huge boat it was big there was a lot of people on it too and i think that was part of the reason i was like <gasps> because i was like thinking oh my god like there's your so many people are, in this boat your cheeks are getting a little red i'm also kind of hot oh <laughs> but yeah it, i mean it's beautiful but the whole time i was thinking what if this sank like there's sharks out here i'm so fascinated by sharks i love there definitely sharks, are out there but i don't want to end up in the water with one at all throw some chum out there i'm pretty sure you would have seen oh, hell no. quite a bit <laughs> so anyway about this movie so the director of this movie is i don't even know how to say this is it johannes johannes jo roberts johannes roberts yeah so she directed or he or whoever it is the strangers the immediate the um the original 47 meters down she he also did resident evil quite a few of those and then the strangers which we have also reviewed I'm about on to say here. it i thought we did that one and I'm a Strangers fan, so yes. So I'm not surprised that I like this movie because I really like the Strangers. So um, the cast for this, the first person, which is the main main character, her name is Mia, and she is played by Sophie Nalise. She is in a really recent show that I have not yet seen, but a lot of people are raving about it. It's called Yellow Jackets, and it's with Christina Ricci, and I think it's about cannibals. It's like some TV show. Um, I don't know what it's on, though. I think it may be on that Tubi or Peacock or whatever that streaming I service eat is. cannibals. <laughs> it's incredible. When, when you and I think animals. of cannibal songs, I think about Kesha and you think about whatever the hell that is. I eat cannibals. <laughs> I can't remember who did that song. Um, and then some show called The Rest of Us. Is that? It's not The Last of Us. It's The, the Last of Us. Us. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Okay, so... And then Corinne Fox, which is her stepsister in the movie. Her name is Sasha in the movie. This was her very first acting she role. She did pretty good, too. I thought she was great. Yeah. Um, John Corbett. Who oh, yeah. We know him. Man Crush Monday. Sex in the me. City. He is Aiden on Sex in the City. Who dates Man Crush Carrie. Monday? Really? I love him on Sex in the City. Not in this movie. In this movie, he's a little rough looking. But he Sex is. in the City, he's a cutie pie. Um, his name is Grant, and he plays... Uh, Corinne Fox, who is Sasha, her stepdad, and then he is actually Mia's dad. Okay, go back to John Corbett again. Is yes. he the same level as what's his name? Um, who's your other boyfriend? Uh, uh, is Stars Born? Oh, Bradley Cooper. Is he Bradley Cooper? No, it's okay. a different thing. I the way I feel Leah about him is loves <laughs> Bradley Cooper. I do love Bradley Cooper, but. He's just, just is he like, just cute? Is that it? Or yeah, he's just cute. He just seems like a very sweet person. Okay, so it's and, not and like he's sexy. Is, he's just cute. He's cute. Okay. In Sex and the City, he's just way too fucking. But good Bradley for, Cooper is effing hot. Yes. Okay, I'm making sure I understand. <laughs> um, John Corbett, he in Sex and the City is way too good for Carrie. Like, let's just be <laughs> honest. He is. He's too fucking nice for her. She's horrible. Um, oh, he can do better than her. <laughs> he can. Um, I was so sad. When they break up in that show, it's like this for the final time. It's like the saddest thing. For the final time. Because um, they date twice. There's a few of them. They date twice. And then she says she doesn't want to get married. And it's like. I'm not. Heartbreaking for him. I am not Awful. a Sex in the City fan. I know you're not. But if you have not seen Sex in the City, he is who she is going to marry on My Big Fat Greek Wedding. If you have seen that. Um, and in this movie, he did good on that movie though. Yeah, he did. He was cute in that um, one. <laughs> no, he had long hair in that. Oh, one. well, he had long hair um, in this one too, kind of. Yeah, and he doesn't look good in this movie. Okay. Um, you know who he? I don't know if he's married to her or he's just been in a very long-term relationship with her. 
Who? Bo Derek. Really? For a long time. Like, they've been together for, I think, probably at least 15 years. Oh, Bodo. A long time. Um, and then Brienne, I think it's Chu. It's TJU. She plays Alexa, who is kind of like a TV star in her own way. She was on Chicago PD. I've not seen that. She was on the uh, TV show. Was she the more the, uh, the Korean looking one? Well, I don't know what her... Well, I'm just saying, but did she look uh, Asian? Yes, she's okay. Asian. Um, she was on the Scream TV show, and then she was on, I guess, an episode of Grey's Anatomy. I don't know who her character was on that. Um, and then Sistine Salone. Sistine! She plays Nicole, and this was also her debut role alongside Corinne Fox. And then there is, there's not very many characters in this movie, which is another thing I kind of like about it because you're not having to follow like a bunch of different people. Which one was Davy Santos? He is Ben. Is so he, oh, okay, he yeah, is yeah, the yeah. one that dates Alexa, the Asian girl. Oh. And because um, that's how she knew about this place because okay. she's the one that brought them there. Mm-hmm. And then there is Kylan Rambo who plays Carl. And he's him and Ben are both extremely minor characters. They don't really play like an important thing in this. Um, he was in Teen Wolf and Criminal Minds. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Carl, 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 Carl. He Carl, was Carl. the um, the fat he, guy. The fat guy. Yeah, there's a fat guy in Teen Wolf. The original. The no Teen Wolf is like the TV show, not the one with Michael J. Fox. <laughs> You thought, <laughs> you thought somebody from a Michael J. Fox movie was in this? Come on now. That's what I was wondering. Um, they didn't I've, specify I've, which team wolf. <laughs> team wolf. I should have. I should. I. When you know what's funny is what I was you writing. Have to specify. <laughs> I was almost going to specify that on there for you. Yeah. Which year? Uh, no. I have you seen the original <laughs> Teen Wolf, by the way? I've seen parts of it. Missing out. Um. Missing. You were, you were like so into Michael J. Fox. Mm-hmm. You love all of his movies. Because he's so cute. He is so cute. He is, a, he is cute. He's a cute one. <laughs> um, but Davey Santos that plays Ben, I forgot to say his credits. Um, he's been on Law & Order, Good Sam, and The Will & Grace Reboot. I am not a fan of The Will & Grace Reboot. Me either. Um, I'm a huge fan of the original. I have seen that whole series so many times. But um, yeah, a lot of what's... Pay um, attention to it. <laughs> a lot of the people on this list are not even like movie actors. They're TV actors, which I thought was interesting because I thought that they played dramatic things very well. Um, and then Nia Long is in this. I found that surprising because she's kind of a, ma- uh, a minor character in this movie. She is Sasha's mom who's okay. married to John Corbett. Uh, and ah, she was in Big Mama's House. That's why she looked familiar. Pretty much everybody knows who Nia Long is, especially, yeah, yeah especially, yeah, if you've seen um, Big Mama's House, and then she was also in the TV show Empire. I saw her. I'm like, man, I know. But she was in a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, she had such a long credit list that of stuff that I knew. She has age. I was like, I kind of just need to condense this down to things that people, like, really know, and then she, they'll be like, oh, yeah. She's aged a little bit. Oh, my God. I thought I think she's so pretty. Holy crap. We're 47 minutes into this already. Not even... <laughs> Because most of this was talking about the, the booze. The tequila. Um, tequila. So anyway. Now this, what is this right here? Oh, that's for you. Or that's for me. <laughs> Those are my notes. <laughs> are we supposed to change? Yes. Um, sorry, I had to make a note for myself. But that that is another thing I will say about this movie. Is it had a very much the descent vibe of being trapped. Do you know what I'm talking about? The I descent. hope so. Because we've I talked say, about it on this. I want to say that we've seen this one too. <laughs> we've talked about it on the podcast. <laughs> Why are you making fun of me? <laughs> because no. these are. I remember. That you no, what is it? What was that one? Oh yeah, with the well, freaking weird cave. animal caves. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This had a very distinct vibe. I almost felt like this was the plot was maybe a little bit copied off the descent. In a sense. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I guess I can kind of see that. I see it. was thinking that the entire time that I was watching this and I, I've never really thought too much about it before, but, and I, I say this every time we do a podcast, but I don't really think too much about the movies that we watch other than like, if I like it or dislike it until I'm like, okay, well we need to do this for the podcast. And then I kind of mental make notes while I'm watching it. And I very much felt like that. Like there was a leader of the group, like in the descent there, were going back and forth to different places. They were trying to get out and then there was a collapse and they got trapped in the cave. But and that's it, almost like, it almost seems like that's, that's the plot of every scary movie, right? It, not almost, really. 
There's not a whole lot of like getting trapped in cave movies. <laughs> yeah. I can say this about this movie though. There's one thing that that once it gets into the story, mm-hmm. it moves quick. It does. And that it keeps and your attention. That I was just about to say that is like probably what you like the most about it. Probably so, because it moves quick, it does what it's got to do, it makes it makes sense. Okay, let's move on. Because it didn't get stagnant. It just kind of and that, that's actually kind of why you like that Friday the 13th movie is because it moves pretty quick, the story. Maybe so. Maybe. Because um, you did say that on the podcast when we did that one. Oh. Um, <laughs> I know. So the film, the film, oh my God, I sound like an 80-year-old. The movie <laughs> is based in... Is it How is a film and movie any different from each other? A film. Because who calls it a film? Who calls <laughs> records records? <laughs> Whatever. Okay, you have a point. Whatever. Vinyl. Vinyl or record. Okay, so anyway, the, the movie is based in Yucatan, Mexico. I thought that was interesting. And I think that Mexico, was Mexico, kind of, tequila. <laughs> it goes together. I think that's the only thing really that ties the two movies together. The two 47 meters down movies. Oh, uh, the first one was in Mexico too? It was. In, I don't know if it was in Yucatan, but it was in Mexico. Um, so Mia, who is played by that Sophie girl, she is getting bullied by this girl at their school. And her, o- opening, and then that's kind of where the dynamic between her and her stepsister, Sasha, is shown. Yeah, opening credits shows her falling into the pool from the bottom. You think she's in the ocean. But I was thinking, why is somebody swimming in the ocean with their book next to them? And it's her getting pushed into the pool. That's very, very smart opening. And I, that is probably the only thing that is similar to the very first movie. Cause in the first movie, that's kind of how it opens too, is they're in a pool at a hotel and like somebody spills a drink in the pool and it looks like blood. Ah. So that's, that's also how that movie opened. So other than location and the opening, I think that's the only relation hmm. to me. I didn't really see anything else. Um, but that's where kind of the dynamic is shown. Obviously, Mia gets pissed off. They go back to their house with um, Sasha's mom and her stepmom. And you realize that they really don't like each other. Because... Yeah. And then John Corbett, um, who is, you know, their yeah, dad she, and stepdad. She walks in the house and she's still wet from being in the pool at school. Mm-hmm. And he's like, "What's what happened? Yeah. So he he knows that they don't really they're not fond of each other. So he's trying to get them to bond, and he tells them that he has booked a trip for them to do like one of those glass bottom boat things. Yeah, a tourist to look thing. at sharks. Which great are, great white sharks. Which which the daughter other daughter was embarrassed about because that's what tourists do, right? Yes. Uh, Corinne Fox Sasha. Yes. Was embarrassed. Like that's what tourists do. Yeah. His daughter was into it. Like she was kind of excited about it. Yeah. And he was like, "I don't give a fuck. That's what you're doing." <laughs> yeah. But you're gonna go. She said, like, "I have plans." Like that. Yeah. I have plans. Well, you're gonna go. Well, fuck him. Yeah. Quit being a bitch and come on. Yeah. Quit being a bitch and come on. <laughs> and so there. So it cuts to the next day. They're waiting in line to go to this glass bottom boat. But then Alexa and Nicole. Show they, up. Yeah, they showed that the girls that were bullying them were in, to- in the line for the same exact boat. Yeah, so Sylvester Sloan's daughter and then that, what's her name, Brienne or Brianna, um, too. They show up and in a super cute Jeep that I just absolutely love. A nice four-door yellow Jeep. It was so cute. And so they're like, well, we can we can go somewhere that I know of that... that no tourists will be at. Exactly. Yeah. And so that right there, I'd be like, mm, red flag, I'm not going. Because who knows what can happen. And I've seen too many scary movies. Yeah, but they were going to school there. They lived there. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, oh, and that that is another note that I have. And I didn't even think about it until you just said that. So there was no one at that school, if you watch that opening scene, that was actually Mexican. Well, no. It's, it's like a private school in Mexico. Supposedly, if you move down there, you need to put your kids in private school because the public schools are too bad. Really? Yeah, it's I've like, never heard that. Yeah, if you're if you go down if you move to Mexico and you have kids, you put them in private school. But I was I was surprised to see. But it was also any every representation of a um, race except Mexican in Mexico. Yeah, I thought that was kind of weird. It was a very high end school. I, I mean, I guess it was and all that stuff. It was pretty high end to have a, a pool in the very front of the school. To get pushed into. I thought that was bizarre. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> um, but anyway, and so they, and nobody speaks Spanish in this movie either. By the way, no, nobody does. Nobody speaks Spanish. And um, I, I think that's so. Now that you said that, that's so bizarre. So there was there was nobody that was actually Mexican in this movie except maybe Ben. Uh, the guys that were doing the, the uh, oxygen tanks were. I think there's one or two oxygen of them. Oxygen tanks. Yeah, they were moving the oxygen tanks from like a house in the back of a truck. Oh, okay. And then maybe Ben. And that's it. I yeah. think maybe Ben was, but he may have been white. I don't know. Um, I can't remember. But so Alexa drives them to this remote little area, and it's like a little enclave thing. Yeah, it's pretty. It looks like it's in Hawaii. It's pretty. It does. And so they get down there, and they're swimming in this area. And They jump in. Nicole, yeah. And then Nicole is like, who is uh, Sylvester Sloan's daughter. She's like, well, let's go diving. And Alexa well, was like, yeah, let's go look at the caves. Well, when they're up on the, that little platform in the middle of this this water thing, mm-hmm. there's like tote boxes up there with scuba diving equipment because Homegirl, whatever her name is, her dad had equipment there for guys that are going to yes, be coming in. Yes, yes. So they start messing around in the boxes and she's like, I don't think this is a good idea. So her, and she just does it anyway. Her dad's like, what? Like, I guess an archaeologist. Yeah. And... um. But what's funny is when you watch when they first get there and everything, there's nothing on that platform. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and then, and then I didn't even think the, about that. And then all of a sudden, that shit's just there. I didn't even think <laughs> about that. That is because it shows an overhead view of it. It's just a plain platform. Yeah, you know what? You know what? I didn't even catch that. You know what that reminded me of? Like when you get to a certain level in a video game, <laughs> and then shit just appears. <laughs> That's funny. I didn't even notice that. I did. I did. And I was looking at that like, bitch, where? That was not there when y'all got there. That is funny and so true. Yeah, I just now I'm going to watch it again just to see that part because it's like the overhead view shows their platform. Yeah. It's a big a big float. Yeah. And it's like just, what they have in the ocean where you can get up on a ladder and like get up on the and platform. And there's nothing and there and yeah. suddenly there's boxes of scuba equipment up there. Yeah. Like a whole bunch of shit. It's not just like it's like That's one awesome. or two boxes. Like it's a huge stack of that shit. That is awesome. <laughs> and Didn't so, even catch on to that. <laughs> and so they, Alex is like, yeah, we'll just, there's an altar down there. It's a Mayan altar and it's like we'll just go there and come back type thing yeah it's like a sacrificial altar where people used to get sacrificed or whatever and so she's like we'll just you know make one little trip around it we'll come back out it's cool yeah so they go down there and they get in there and they're looking around at this the this stuff and it's like um, and it starts it's like there it's it's big and it slowly starts getting more and more narrow I would not. I would not do that. A quarter of the way in, I'd have been like, "Fuck this! I'm out. I'm going back up to the, where there's air." Probably because your and shoulders could not fit through where they were going. I would have been, probably, <laughs> but I would have been like, "I'm out. Fuck y'all!" Like, yeah. Y'all oh have no. Fun. Oh no. And I and I even said the same thing about the descent. Oh, you send me those fucking videos all the time of people crawling in holes that are like <laughs> probably this. That's what this movie wide. reminds me oh, of. Oh my god. I do not understand why people oh, the do cave things divers like that. that squeeze in. Oh hell no. Hell no. And people that do that underwater, I'm like, what is or anywhere? What is wrong with you? Why would you do that? They do it for the uh, adventure, I guess. I it know. just makes me angry to watch people do that because it's like I'm not gonna feel bad when you get stuck because well, you should know better. <laughs> and they started they started going down that little hallway and it started getting more and more narrow. Yes, there but f- then it opens up into a room. Yeah, a few places it got really tight, but then it suddenly opens up into this huge room. Yeah. Where there's statues and an altar and pillars, and it's really pretty. And they keep saying, be careful, don't stir up too much salt. Yeah, because then you can't see anything. And you can't see anything. Um, well, let's make one lap around the statues, and then we'll go back. Yes. And so they do that, but then Sylvester Stallone's daughter, Nicole, in the badass. Movie, yeah. She's like, well, there's a fish over here. I'm going to go follow it. So she goes over there, and the fish, like, freaks the fuck out. It's in a different tunnel on the other side of the altar. Yes. And she goes down it. Like, I would not just, like, wander down tunnels by myself. I think that's crazy. They said it was some kind of a tetra fish, and it adapted to the underwater. It evolved because it didn't have eyes. Yes. But it has hearing, whatever. But this tetra fish turned around and freaks out. Mm -hmm. It kind of does stuff. It hisses at them. And she has the most over-the-top reaction you've ever seen in your entire life. Well, here's the thing, too. These pillars have been down there for thousands of years, apparently. Mm-hmm. She ain't going to knock one over. I feel, but I, lo, no. and behold, lo and behold, no. she did. But, but she has the most over, over-the-top over reaction. Like, this thing kind of just, like, it didn't even, like, go after her. It kind of just, like, did this little <laughs> scream thing. Well, I mean, kind of, that thing looked like it was going to bite her boob off. It did kind of look like it was going to bite her. 
Well, whatever. It didn't. But it didn't. And but- she fucking like flew back like 10 fucking feet into this pillar. And it's like, it's are, a- damn, are you okay? Like it really wasn't <laughs> damn, that big of okay. a deal. It wasn't that big of a deal. It's a rock pillar. But she was suddenly <laughs> able to jump hard enough to push it over. Come and on. like this thing is fucking huge. It, that part, like, there is no way that, that she could have knocked that over. That part starts a whole chain reaction movie, and it's just a bad one. And so all this silt, like you said, gets like it starts knocking shit over. Statues. Well, but then all that silt comes up, and they can't see each other. And then I think it's Mia, Mia, and is it Brianna or not Brianna, Alexa? I think it's her or it's her and her sister. One of the two. They find each other. And then that Ben guy comes up. Yeah. And, and he's, he's like, what are you guys like, doing here? Yeah. He's like, well, of course you came down here or whatever. Like, I should have known that you were going to. Because he showed Alexa, who I, I'm assuming is his girlfriend. Because they spent time together and he took her down there before. And oh, that's why that's she right. knows. Okay. Yeah. And so he's like, of course, like you took somebody down here. I knew you were going to bring somebody down here or something like that. Well, he's in the middle of talking and then fucking boom. Yeah. He gets taken away. Eaten by a shark. Did it say, did it show it being a shark at that time yet? Or did well, it yeah, just I mean, you can, you can tell that's what it is because you see like the back of it go by. Okay. So he got eaten by a shark and she freaks the F out. Like right in front of them. She- and because he was like right here next to them, and all of a sudden that shark just like fucking killed him. So they somehow or another found each other back, right? With all the silt, this all cloudy, they could, they were able to find each other. Yes. They go back to the hole where they came in. Yes. And this shark tries to attack them. Yes, and so it causes like a collapse in the tunnel. Yeah, it was shaking it so hard <laughs> it made the rocks collapse. So then they they're stuck now. They can't get out for this through this way. You know what does not make sense to me? I would think where the shark was coming after them, that's where it would collapse. But it was on the other side of the fucking tunnel. Where it's not going to collapse behind them. It wouldn't be a good movie if it did. (laughs) And so... The shark is probably thinking, watch this. But... They're going to make a movie out of this real quick. (laughs) Yeah. I'm going to do it. The CGI shark that doesn't actually exist. Yeah, and that's what I was Um, was about to say. They did kind of a bad job on some of the shark stuff. It... It, it was bad. Yeah, I'm sure the, there's only so much you can do. They probably could have done a little bit more. It was... I would say it's up there... I would say it's a notch above sci-fi shark movies. It just seems like... Like the, sci, like the sci-fi channel. It's, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's almost like... Of course, the sharks are probably supposed to be down there for a long time. But it just looked too animated. It looked it too did. bad. It did. It just looked... I mean, there were times that I thought it didn't look real, obviously. But it looked a little more realistic and then there were times that i was like come yeah. on dude a few times it looked right and a yeah. few times it looked bad like come on dude that looks like shit so they get um, stuck in this tunnel and now they've got to figure out a way to get back out of there yes and she said oh what's his name ben yeah had a guideline a guideline so they yes. had to go try to find the guideline yes and so they they follow it and they get down to this point carl i mean carl they get down to like the um no you're talking about ben Oh, <laughs> um, but they get down, they go down, the, they keep going down further and further, like down these stairs. And I'm like, come on. Like, ooh. first of all, they're the whole thing. I'm like, I, wh- I don't, I would probably have just died where they're at already <laughs> has to be enormous pressure. On their oh, head, yeah, on their, yeah. Like on their ears, which a, and second of all, it has to be fucking freezing. Oh, I would think so. There, not one time was it mentioned being cold down there. And they can, they can also hear each other, and they have no equipment to hear each other, and well, their ears are exposed to the water, and somehow they all hear each other. I didn't catch that either. <laughs> somehow they're all talking to each other. I knew they could probably talk to each other through their masks, but there was no way for them to hear each other unless they had uh, earbuds or something. Yeah, they no, didn't have that. their ears are like totally hanging out in the water, like. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I missed a lot of stuff on this. Um, I really paid attention this time because I wanted to like make sure I knew my shit before so, we talked about so it. So they're going down all these. They keep going down all these staircases, which and, again has to be more and more pressure as they're going down. Yeah, they just seem fine with it. And they go to the catacombs. Yeah, and as they're following the guideline, and then they get to the point where there's there's the guideline is broken. Yes, they got to make a decision which way to go. And they're running out of air. Yes. And so they they make it to this like air pocket area to breathe for a little bit. But they were saying because the air was so old that they couldn't breathe it for very long. 
Yeah. It's not like they've been there for thousands of years. What? So is it like poisonous air? Like, no, I, I mean, understand. but it's just there's only so much oxygen that can be up oh, there. Oh, I guess that's true. <laughs> that was a dumb thing for me to say. But you know what? I mean, there's oxygen in water, so yeah. it's going to go up. I don't know. I'm not a scientist to know how that stuff works, but it seems like the water oxygenates. Maybe if it's that deep, it doesn't. I don't know. Um, you're saying but but they were <laughs> they were forced into that air pocket because These a shark are... a shark had chased them in there yeah behind this cage what are you doing the glasses i can't see i can see right here but i can't see it far away with them on so i have to it's take time them to go get some rabian prescription glasses it's time to kiss my ass <laughs> um, uh. <laughs> so they get to this pocket and uh, mia goes underwater and she's like i hear music and she goes, I think maybe it's my dad because her dad was supposed to be like on the whole opposite side of this place. He's on a whole nother side working. of the home. <laughs> he's, on, he's on a whole nother side of the place. Working. They were doing some work over there. <laughs> Why are you being such a butt? Um, so she, she goes under there and she's like, I can. There's no sense for. Don't fucking do that again. <laughs> <Stop. laughs> I'm trying to talk. Jeez. You talk over me. You just scream at me next. Why don't you hit me? Are you joking? Yes. Maybe not today. Um, <laughs> Maybe a guy. I don't hit you. Um, but she's like, I hear, I hear. Can you fucking <laughs> stop? <laughs> All right, sorry. I'll stop. Well, I think you can go ahead and explain this whole entire thing. I can. I have notes here. <laughs> So anyway, she goes down there and she's like, there's no sense for all of us to try to make it through this hole right here because we don't have very much oxygen. And so she goes by herself. She makes it through this hole. By the time she gets there, Carl, who is the other guy besides Ben that works for her dad. He's down there welding, right? Yes. He's working on something and listening to She's Got the Look. So which, he, come on. It's a speaker underwater. Like, I know you can hear stuff underwater. But I don't know if you can hear it that well. Well, it was super loud. It's still weird. I don't know. I didn't even know you could have an underwater speaker like, like when, down that far. Like if you go underwater in the pool and you clap, you can hear the clapping. Yeah. But I didn't know you could hear like a speaker like that. I, it's a movie. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. The whole time I was thinking, man, can they really do that? And so she's trying to get through there. And I guess it's like kind of a far way to get through there because it takes her a while to get over there. But so by the time she gets there, Carl has been freaking chowed down on by a shark. Yeah. Carl by another shark. So you, you think maybe it's the same one, but it, it, there's two different ones. Yeah. He's welding. He's down there by himself. He knows he's down there by himself and he sees, sees movement by a shadow somewhere, mm -hmm. which by the way, the shadow from the shark is terrible. Oh my God. It's Awful. It looks totally computer animated. Oh my god, yeah. The entire the whole like scene of that does. It was pretty bad. And um so he gets eaten. Well Before she, she gets there. Yeah. She gets down there and she's like, uh holy shit, I can't hear my friends anymore. Yeah, and his mask is on the ground. Yes, and she, she picks it up and so she's kind of freaking out because she realizes that whoever was down there has been attacked by a shark. So She's losing it. Well, then she... Is the music still going at this point? I think or so. Or did the shark eat it? I can't remember. I, th I think it's still going. Did the shark eat it? Yeah. <laughs> um, so... Well, it knocked over the light. She um, finds his head. Like, it pops out of this thing. Yeah. Yeah, and like, he is gone. He that... Is. And I, I even thought this Ugh. before I read, like, a little trivia thing about this. But that is such a reference to Jaws. You know that part when he goes down, um, they're, they're out there at night. And it's before they go hunt the shark in Jaws. But he goes down, um, Matt Hooper, the guy with the beard. And he goes diving and he gets close to that boat underwater. And that guy's head pops out of the boat. Are you fucking serious? I didn't say anything. That is so iconic. You shook your head no. Okay, because I don't know. <laughs> um, but yes. That is such a reference to that. And I thought that when I saw that last night, I was like, oh, my God, that is such a Jaws thing. Unfortunately, um, he doesn't see the shark and promptly becomes his next meal. Did you write that? No, I fucking copy and paste. Okay. Are you serious? I was like, uh, <laughs> you thought I've been writing these? I was like, she doesn't see the shark and promptly becomes its next meal. <laughs> 
And so she freaks out, and then she's like looking around, like to see what's around her, and, and he, then. But she sees the emergency thing going off. Yes, and so she grabs it, and it's like a little flashing light that mm-hmm. has a really annoying noise, and so she's just losing her shit. And then her somebody grabs her arm. Yes, and it, it is her dad. It's her daddy, Grant. Cutie pie. Cutie pie's the rescue, <laughs> or is he? <laughs> And so they he? make it back to her friends after they kind of hid from the shark that's down there. They make it back to her friends. He is leading them out to a, the different entrance. So it's it's kind of the same kind of area, but it's on like the other side. Yeah. At this point, he knows where to go. So he's got to yes. know how to get out in the ocean. Yes. And so he takes them out there. You think they're getting out because they have that line that gets to the top. Yeah. The whatever it is, um, whatever it's called, it's a like, like a like a scaling harness or something. Mm-hmm. And he's showing them how to use it. Alexa, she starts to go up it, and then they realize that there's sharks swimming around underneath them. Two different ones. Yeah, and Stallone chick freaks the f out. Which, I mean, I can't blame her, but it's like, okay, you got them into this mess, and yeah, you now you're making it worse. Pretty sure she doesn't <laughs> think that way. And so anyway. So she starts climbing over Alexa. The, so her character is Nicole. She starts climbing over Alexa and actually makes it to the top. But it's such a fucking dumbass. She grabs onto something that's loose. It just aggravated the shit Dang. out of me that she did this. Because I was like, okay. Yeah, be okay. Okay, like you couldn't even grab onto something stable. Come on. You made it to the top. Like, you were getting out. And I'm pretty sure she didn't select the exact stone she wanted to be <laughs> hanging from. You, you know what also annoyed me about God. this part? Is majority of her upper body was up on the ground. And it's like, you would not have fallen. Most of you was up on the ground. Your legs were hanging over. Like, you would have gotten up there. She was on a loose rock. And... Um, but most, she, she was alone. laying on the ground. She was. She was, <laughs> was out. Like, you did not have to fall. She was out. And, and she fell back in. She fell back in. In slow motion. And I actually read that that was a reference to some Why movie. Why does everything have to be a reference for something? <laughs> because a lot of movies do that. They pay tribute some, in some way. Yes. To a movie her dad did. And I don't know what the movie was, but it was something in 93. And he has like this slow motion falling scene. Cliffhanger? That wasn't Sylvester? Yes. Yes, it was. That's he, what it was. He wasn't, this wasn't Sylvester Stallone though. They said it was. Was, the, was that Cliffhanger? I think it was. Because that sounds familiar. It makes sense now that you say that though. And um, they said that they did that with her character because that was, I guess, a significant thing in this movie that her dad was in. Um, Cliffhanger. <clears throat> I have not even heard of that, so I don't know what that yeah, is. Yeah, they were... Uh, okay, you ever seen Ace Ventura, Pet Detective? Yes. Where he's on that tight line and he loses the raccoon? And the raccoon falls out from his little harness. He's trying to help his raccoon. And the second one? Is it the second one? Is that where he's up on, like, mountains and yeah. shit? Yeah, yeah the, the second fall, one. That's also from Cliffhanger. Really? Same thing. Let's see here. Cliffhanger. It is Sylvester Stallone. Look at that. That that's what it was because okay I I remember the cliffhanger thing so interesting um but that's okay. why they did that with her and that's why they made it like such this dramatic ass thing is because I guess that was something that happened to him in that movie I mean and now it makes sense so she falls down gets, strange and I was just making funny I, hate to I was say making it. I was making fun of you for it now I'm going holy shit that makes sense I hate to say it but this another was, tribute <laughs> yes so. If any of you have ever seen, um, and this is one of my favorite shark movies, I hate to admit it, but I like it, Deep Blue Sea, that one that I've made you watch where they're stuck in like that building thing, and then the sharks get in, and they're doing something with Alzheimer's, like it's like a scientific research center, and they're doing, like they're doing um, like drug testing on sharks and they're like injecting their brains with like, <laughs> it sounds great. You've seen it. You know, you would know what I'm talking about. And that guy gets his arm bit off. Somebody's has, arm has, is bitten off in every shark movie. <laughs> no, it does not. And it has uh, Samuel L. Jackson in it and LL Cool J. He's like the, <laughs> the chef in it. Is that the one where they're like, they're in like underwater lab? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that movie's very cheesy too, but I really like it. So there is this part in it where Samuel L. Jackson 
he gets grabbed by the shark like just out of nowhere he's in the middle of talking and he gets grabbed by the shark well he gets dragged because they're in that lab and he gets dragged underneath the water and then there's two of the sharks and he gets ripped apart and that's exactly what happens to her in this movie you think that you don't think that's coincidental at all no because that's a really big thing especially with scary movies is there's always some kind of like homage or like a reference to another movie especially with shark movies I know it sounds stupid, but it's true. I mean, I'm not saying you're wrong. It's just seems it's, very. It's a far thing. Fetched. It's a thing. So like, I mean, especially you know more than I do. I especially with big movies, like there's even small stuff. Like we've um, watched movies before where well, they'll name characters after like other characters in really significant horror movies. Did you know that, like in um, Back to the Future, the uh, dir- <laughs> you paused for a long. The director put like things in the scene. That you, you wouldn't notice unless you looked. Like what? Like that other license plate. Oh, like his kids' names or something? No, like... Or like it, people's names? Like there's one license plate that says for somebody. I can't remember what it was Oh, like. I think you've told me this before. And it was his secretary. What? Oh, I kind of like that. That's so sweet. Is it the same thing or... It's so uh, sweet. Both <laughs> Kind of the same thing. Well, I, I mean, no, Mar- not really. This is like a whole, like a conceptual. I thing. think it says for Mary or something like that, like F O R M R Y. Oh, you know anyway. who also does that? The guy that writes the Arthur books. He puts his kids' names in the Arthur books. <laughs> does he? <laughs> he does. Um, but I mean, you know who else does that? Who? Meet the parents <laughs> when they. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> So it's kind of the same thing, but it's like a different thing because this is like a conceptual thing and that's just, I'm putting somebody's name in the movie. So she, but, um, she, she falls, she gets eaten, ripped in two by two sharks. Yes. Then. And, and the line falls, so they can't get back up. And They're then stuck. And homegirl that was on the line, does she get eaten next or does the dad get eaten next? The dad does. Just because, because, right? Yeah, he so, he's, so you think he's the savior and he's going to get them out of this. And I hated that part of the movie because I really like him. That hurt your heart? Um, it did hurt my heart because I loved him. I wanted him to like live to the end. They were, just, they were talking about some way to get out. And he was it, like, we're going to get out of this. And, and, and that to me was kind of a Samuel L. Jackson, I'm going to give a motivational speech. Well, he thing. was telling them what we have to do to get out of here. Yes. We can't which go is so what, so because the tides will take you out or something. Which is what happens in that Deep Blue Sea movie. He's like, everybody's like hopeless. Like, we don't know what we're going to do. And he gives this speech of, you know, like, we're going to get the fuck out of here. And like, he's like really like hyped up. And then all of a sudden he's just getting eaten. Yeah. He was gone quick. Yeah. So and now that's, that what, that's what happens in this movie too. So now that he's gone, there's three left. The two yes. sisters. And, and Alexa. Alexa. They decide we have to go down. Like he said. Yes. And so they go down, and then they end up in this area where... It's like a shit ton of current, <clears throat> like bad. I didn't understand that. I think that really, that's really happens. Like, there's apparently some opening to get out to the ocean ocean from there. Oh, oh, okay. I, I really wasn't paying too much was, attention, so I didn't understand why that was happening. Finding Nemo references that a lot. The, why, the, the currents don't laugh at me. You're fighting it. <laughs> Dude, that was hilarious. But I mean, Finding like, Nemo references this. But I'm wondering if it's really does it really go that damn fast like that? I wonder. Oh, if I'm it, sure. I mean, I, I it probably just depends on where you're at. I mean, they were making it seem like it was going fucking Current, fast. That I don't. I mean, I don't know that much about the ocean, I'm so I'm, there could be currents like that. I mean, I'm sure there could be. I'm gonna check and see. But somewhere like that, I don't know because it was in a cave. It was like in this gorge, open gorge thing. It was. I don't strange. know what it was, but I'm I'm sure a current could carry you that fast because some of those currents are fucking strong if you get in the ocean, even at the beach. Yeah, like, maybe. there's people that drown at the beach because they get carried off in a current and they're trying to fight it. How fast are ocean currents? Let's see how fast are ocean currents. 13 feet per second. That's Holy shit. Pretty bad. That is bad. How fast are deep ocean currents? That is insane. Uh, speeds currents, 250 centimeters a second. Or 98 inches a second. That- or 5.6 miles per hour. Okay. Maybe it seemed like movie, it was like going like 100 miles an hour. Dude, yes. In this movie, it was ridiculous. Like, 
It was like they were in a freaking whirlwind. What is the fastest ocean current in the world? Let's see. The Gulf Stream current. Which is in Finding Nemo. 5.6 miles an hour. And that's the fastest one in the world. This thing. It may look like it was a tornado down here. <laughs> they were, they really and I believed it. Did. I did too. Damn it. They really fucking did. I was like, oh my God, that's so scary. It, yeah, um, it's not even true. So her, her sister, Sasha, that me and sister, up. Sasha, gets Sasha. taken down in this thing. And you think she's died. And so Alexa's like, okay, well, we can't do anything because there's no way. Like, she died. So we are going to have to kind of crawl along the, the side s- of the The side thing. walls to stay away from the current. Yes. That's going apparently 200 miles an hour. <laughs> and I don't remember. They get to the, I think the opening they're trying to get to, and the shark pops out, right? Is that what it was? I th- and then it gets a hold of her. It gets a hold I- of her tank. Yes. Remember? And so Mia's like, holy fucking shit. And she, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> so I thought the shark got her tank when they were going up that ravine thing, that crack. No, 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 no. Okay. So you're thinking, of, I know what you're talking about. You're thinking of a different thing. So Alexa gets her tank Somebody in the eat, shark's mouth. The shark eats her tank. <laughs> You have to make everything about that. So she, the shark gets a hold of her tank. Kind of like last night when we were eating dinner, we were. Oh slop, my god! I was slopping everybody's tortillas. You have to explain that though. I was putting tortilla guacamole in everybody's tortillas. Yeah, and then you looked at me and you said, "I want to slop your tortilla." <laughs> like that's fucking disgusting. You, you wanted tortilla? You wanted guacamole in your tortilla? <laughs> I knew. If you that's were- the case, then I slopped everybody's tortillas, including my daughter's. <laughs> So gross. Slopping your tortilla. It, I knew that you were joking, but it was. I was talking about the look on, on your tortilla. The look on Hannah's face when you said that was hilarious. She was like, "What the fuck?" Um. So anyway, I'm sad. They're probably used to that. Now. <laughs> they probably are because it's not like. It's not like a surprise look. It's like a. Are you oh my serious? God, here it goes again. Yeah, like stop. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Shark gets a hold of her tank. Gets a hold of her tank, and then Mia's, bites her tank. Mia's like, "Oh shit! <laughs> oh shit! Oh shit!" <laughs> so she lets go, and she's getting dragged down by this current. And Alexa gets out of her tank and to get away from the shark. You think she's getting away, and she drowns. You are totally lost by what I just said. <laughs> I can tell. But there were only two people that got to that part of the current thing, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. She gets, she gets out of her straps and everything, and she drowns. That's right. Because she was trying to swim, but that current was so strong, she couldn't get anywhere. Yeah, this is a different scene. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and, gotcha. And she, she drowned before she could get anywhere. Yeah, and then it cuts back over to the sisters. Yes. And, and so, yeah. so Mia gets dragged down by the current, ends up finding Sasha, who, what, what movie did we watch recently that ended like that? We were like, what the fuck? Like what? Remember, it's like she almost made it out. Oh, it was that. Um, oh, the the, the uh, Deep House. Yeah. It was like, oh. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, anyway, sorry. Um, which is a Hulu movie, and I think people should watch it. It's weird as fuck at the end, but it's actually not. It's not a horrible movie. It's, it's weird. It is weird. It's fucking weird, but it's good. And the ending of it sucks. Um, I, th- I feel like the end... The very end, the last scene with her, I feel like that was like a good ending, but it kind of sucked at the same time because I was like, no, like you wanted her to live. Yeah, it was there. Um, but so they find each other. They end up finding a way out. Yeah, they go. They scale the walls. They go into an opening, which leads to like a cliff going up, like a very thin opening, a ravine going up yes. to the water. And they both get their tanks stuck. And so they're trying to get out of their stuff. Well, Sasha gets out and she swims ahead of Mia and Mia gets out of hers, but then her legs get stuck. Dude, when that happened, I was like, Oh my God, I know. Because like, I've had that feeling, (laughs) dude, I've had that feeling of like panicking when you're underwater. You suddenly just got like claustrophobic again. Oh my God. It's, oh my God. It's terrible. Cause have you, have you ever realized like how deep you were in the water and that you, like you need, can't make it you out. You need to get up and like you're running out of being able to hold your breath. Yeah. That's like how I felt when I was watching that. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like 
fucking hurry this up. And so she eventually gets out. They're swimming up to the surface and just ironically, they run into the boat. Yeah, they swim up and they run into the... That they're supposed to have gotten on in the first place. They were the supposed glass to be, bottom boat. And lo and behold, who's standing at the glass the, when she pulls up? The back. The back <laughs> from school. <laughs> And they are chumming the water for great white sharks. And it's like, God damn it. Like, it had to be in this area. It had to be in this area. Yeah. So they're on the other side. They're swimming to get to the boat. And (laughs) they get hit by sharks a couple of times. Different sharks from the caves. Yeah. Um, Like actual great white sharks that are like. The first, the sister, what's her name, gets out of the water. Mia. Mia gets out of the water. But her sister. Sasha. Gets bitten by a shark and taken down. So Mia jumps back into the water to save Sasha. With a, a shark's tooth that her gun. dad gave her. Oh, With yeah, 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 yeah. Do those uh, work underwater? I mean, you know what? This movie I don't does, know anything about This that. movie's misled us about currents. <laughs> so probably Maybe. A, there's probably a lot of inaccurate things in Maybe this movie. Maybe so. But <laughs> I don't the know. sister was able to get out. Now suddenly, Mia. Is it Mia? Mia, Which, yeah. Mia's her sister gets out of the water. Mia's trying to get out of the water now. She gets taken down by a shark. And like in bad ways, both of them. Yeah. And, and but Mia had just happened to have her dad's shark tooth that he gave her in the very mm-hmm. beginning of the movie. Yes. And she gouged the shark's eye with it and it let her go. Yeah. She gets out suddenly. Yes. Like these two probably should have been almost completely bitten in half by both of these sharks that got them. But they and they get out of the water and it's like Oh, I just have like a little bit of a cut. Ow. (laughs) Ow, it hurts. Like, you know how I always say. Not like my guts are falling out. No. You know how how I've always said like, you know, it'd be kind of not cool because it would fucking suck. But like how much of a badass you would feel if you got bitten by a shark. But like in a way where like it's like they bit you and then they just let go. Yeah. A good. That's kind of what this was. A quick bite (laughs) and done. Not dragged underwater and half eaten. They look like they just had a little... A, a, that's that's what a, looked like happened. It looked like the shark was like... A skin puncture. It was like... It was gumming them. <laughs> it was an old shark. <laughs> and so... That's what that looked like, though. They both got out of the water. Nothing traumatic was happening to them. Yeah, and that Blood bitch, loss wise. The, the bitch looked at them, and then she walked off, and that was it. Yeah, that was the end of the movie. They both lived. It was a, It sounds better. It, it was actually better than we're making it sound. It was a decent movie. It, it is a really good movie, but there's just parts of it that are funny because it's like, Yeah, really? you didn't just get dragged down and have skin tears. Like, mm, I don't know about that. But there, as a whole, I like the movie. What is this uh, trivia thing? So, yeah. So, these were some things that I read about it. Um, so, Ben, who is the guy that is the first one to get eaten. So in, in this movie, and it seems like more people, there was a total death count of five people. You have a death count on here for real. Yes. Oh. Why not? I mean, no. Um, <laughs> What's that mean? Ben, Ben's name may be a reference to Ben McDaniel, an amateur cave diver who vanished while diving in Florida's Vortex Spring Cave in 2010. <laughs> Never heard about that. That sounds horrible. No, but it sounds like it's, it's something. It sounds like something you'd love to watch a movie. Over. Oh my god, I would love to know all about that. I actually, when I saw, when I see I saw a movie that, about somebody getting stuck in a cave. No, but I want to like read about it. Oh. Um. Yeah. When I saw that, I was like, oh my god, that sounds so interesting. But that sounds horrific. Um. But then you know the Jaws thing that I talked about with that head. Um. Sharks, and I think I already knew this from Shark Week. <laughs> but sharks kill less than 10, 10 people a year, like in the entire world. But research estimates that humans kill up to 100 million sharks per year. That is so, horrible. According so to this sad. movie, half the yearly kills by sharks was happening in one day. <laughs> Another I interesting didn't even fact. I think about that. Yeah. That's true. Um, but also the original scheduled release date for this movie was in June of 2019, but it got pushed back to August. So it was not to compete with Annabelle comes home. I saw Annabelle comes home. It was actually kind of okay. Really? It was okay. What was that? Another scary movie? Yes. It's about that doll. Oh yeah. Um, (laughs) (laughs) You hate those kind of movies, but I like this movie. I thought, you know, (laughs) It sounds like when we talk about it, it doesn't sound that interesting. It was a good movie. Do I think it is a 10 out of 10 amazing creature feature? No. Yeah, same here. No. Like we said before, I think it's a good, I think it's solid 6.5 out of 10, maybe. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, it's worth a few repeats. There, there's, some, there's some stuff that's like, oh, come on, like the effects or whatever. Um, 
some bad acting by Sylvester Stallone's daughter. Um, but as a whole, it's not bad. I mean, if you want to just sit down and watch like a kind of okay shark movie, I think it's a good watch. It is, and it's definitely watch. a repeat it's watch because there are some movies that I'm like, oh, I thought it was amazing. Would I watch it again? Probably not. But there's just something about this movie that I would watch it again. Yeah, and I, I don't know why. Space it out, though. It'd be yeah, good. Well, yes, definitely. And but it, it's a good movie. And definitely, definitely remember to try Fortaleza Tequila. Yes. Um, the whole time we've been talking, I've been thinking, man, I need to go make myself another drink real quick. <laughs> I haven't even But try Fortaleza. We had, again, Ranch Waters was our drink today. Two shots of Blanco t- uh, Fortaleza. I do a tablespoon of... Uh, um, of lime juice, maybe a little bit more. I probably do more than that. And then top it off a Topo Chico. Do not rim the salt, the glass of salt. But yeah, yeah. that was today's episode. Um, you can find us on Instagram at Booze and Bloodshed. Also on Facebook at Booze and Bloodshed. If you have any suggestions for us as far as a liquor, a cocktail, a wine, or a beer, let us know. Um, our, our Gmail at Booze and Bloodshed at gmail.com. And yeah that's it so i'm brandon i'm leah and we'll see you next time peace if i never know if you're gonna leave i'ma let you go away i'm tired